toes either with the knees wide or together, whichever version you prefer the most, and that you feel comfortable being in for just two or three minutes for centering and breath work before we move tonight. Once you feel settled there, allow your arms to relax so you're not actively reaching. And let the forehead settle either to the ground or a block and close your eyes. And just take a moment to scan through your body. Just mentally checking in with yourself and notice what type of energy is stirring within you right now. And let that energy just settle. Feeling a sense of stillness in the posture so that you can observe the movement of your own breath. Start to watch the rise and fall of your breath cycle, feeling yourself expand with each breath in and contract with each breath out. If you find that you very quickly go to your thoughts, just maybe repeat in your own mind, breathe in, breathe out, or inhale, exhale, just to keep yourself present in your body right now. And after those five breaths, you can float your eyes open and lift up off the heels and come into table pose, adjusting your knees. Let's take some spinal waves. On an inhalation, lift your tailbone, chest, and chin. And exhale, drop your tailbone and tuck the chin. Again, inhaling, deeply arch your spine. And exhale, deeply round the spine. And continue in both directions or add some other movement if that feels good. Maybe some lateral motion or getting into the hips and shoulders in other ways that you'd like to right now.
and then arrive back at a neutral table pose. Keep your hips aligned over the knees and extend your arms forward. We're going to press the chest toward the mat for half down dog. Actively reach through the arms and push against your palms like you would in the full pose. Feel your shoulders get active as the spine pulls into your body. Nice deep breath. And the next time you inhale, lift your head, walk it back into table. And let's step the right foot in between the hands for a low lunge. Slide your left knee back. And feel your hips move down toward the ground. Deep bend in that right hip joint as we stretch the quad and the left hip. On an inhalation, reach the arms up, rising into crescent lunge. Lift up out of the low back, lift your ribs and chest. Find one focal point here. The next time you exhale, take your left hand to the floor, spinal twist as you rotate from the navel all the way up the back, actively reaching the right arm toward the ceiling. One more breath in. Exhale the right hand to the floor or your blocks. Send the hips back and extend the right leg for our half split or runner stretch. Move your hands or blocks back a little bit and press the back of the thigh toward the mat. Just do your best to extend this leg. And let's lift the chest to lengthen the spine, kind of like the flat back position. And just notice how that deepens the stretch of the hamstring. If that's strong enough, you're going to maintain the flat back. If you want more in the hamstrings, let's fold, bring the rib cage, chest, and nose toward the leg. Drop the head, running the, chip, the neck lengthen. If you fold it, inhale, lift your head and chest. And then we're going to exhale, come back to that low lunge. Lift your knee off of the ground so you're in a high lunge position. Plant your palms on the mat and step back to plank pose. Bring the feet and legs together. Line the shoulders over the palms. And we're just going to rock back and forth on the balls of the feet. So go toward the heels and then toward the tiptoes. Just opening up all the joints and the toes here. Really draw the navel in, feel your abdominals contract. The next time you rock forward toward your tiptoes, then lower all the way to the ground. Point your toes, inhale to a low or a high cobra, and then exhale, roll back down. Twice more, inhaling to rise up, exhale to release, and once again, Inhale, roll up, exhale, let go. Okay, let's press back up to table and switch legs. Left foot in between the hands for your low lunge. Right knee slides back. The next time you inhale, rise up, reaching the arms over the shoulders. Lift up out of the lower back. Open the chest and glide the arms back if you can. And the next time you exhale, right hand to the floor, spinal twist. Rotate from your navel. Feel your ribcage draw back as you actively reach up with your left arm. One more deep breath in, and exhale, left hand to the floor or your blocks. Send the hips back in space for that half split. So you extend the leg and draw your hands back. And we're pulling the toes up off of the ground as we really press against that heel, lengthening the hamstrings. 
Good, see if you can extend your spine now. Lift the chest, reach the crown of the head forward like in the flat back position. And then optional full forward bend. Bring your rib cage, chest, and nose toward the leg, dropping your head.
One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, feet to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, and release. Good, we're gonna take a variation. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, walk your left leg back. Let's bring that knee down, low lunge. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, knee up. Exhale, down dog. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, feet to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, right leg all the way back. Bring that knee to the floor. Inhale, rise up, crescent lunge. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, back knee up. Exhale, down dog. Good, steady, slow breath here. One more breath in, look forward. Exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, rise up, reach over your head. Exhale, and release your arms. Good, we're gonna take a wide-legged forward bend, and we're gonna use a strap for this to do a chest opening. If you're comfortable connecting your hands behind your back, you can do that without the strap. So separate your feet as wide as you would for a warrior pose and turn your heels out a little bit. Strong, straight legs. Let's take the hands behind you either clasping or with the strap, and roll your shoulders back. Gradually extend your arms. Good, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, send your hips back, slowly fold. Just take your time here. Let your head and neck drop, and gradually lift the arms away from your spine. And try not to push or force that. Just let time being here help release any resistance in the shoulders. Let the weight of gravity help to lower the palms. And if you have a lot of mobility in your shoulders, work on continuing to squeeze them together, even as the forearms come over your upper body lower to the ground. And a few more breaths here. Really expand your sides and your lower back every time you inhale. Good. The next time you exhale, let's lower the arms. Put the strap down if you were using it and take your hands to the floor or to locks in between your feet. And let's inhale, lift that in chest, find a flat back position. So walk your hands or blocks forward so they're right underneath your shoulders. So really engage your lower back. Draw your navel in. And feel your hip joints reach back in space as the crown of the head reaches forward in space. Good. We're going to keep the breath deep here. We're going to add a twist. Left palm down, rotate from the navel as you raise the right arm. Good. And really push your mat or your block with your left hand. Feel that shoulder support the upper body here. And let your exhalation be what allows you to twist more deeply. One more breath in, exhale, unwind. Good, find the flat back position again. So re-lengthen your spine, nice and strong in the low back. Other side, right palm down, rotate from your belly button on up. So use the strength of your core, try not to drop your hips in an effort to twist. 
and push that point of contact. Strong right arm. Good. Exhale. Release. Look toward the front of your mat and walk your hands there. Turn that foot forward and end up in a lunge. Good. So whatever side that is for you, for me it's my right foot forward. You're going to bring your back knee to the floor. And let's rise up again to your crescent lunge. And then bring the palms together in front of the heart. So we're going to be twisting toward the bent knee. For me that's twisting to the right. Other side if you've got your left foot forward. Let's cross the elbow to the outside of that knee. And then use your top hand to really push the bottom hand. And that's going to give you more leverage to twist up your spine here. From the lumbar all the way to the upper back. And glide your top shoulder blade back in space toward the spine. Really feel it root in there. Good. A few more deep breaths here. Nice deep spinal twist. The next time you exhale, peel that elbow off the knee and take the hands to the floor. Let's take both arms inside of that front leg and move the foot over an inch or two. Turn the foot out at a slight angle and let the knee and thighs fall away from your shoulder. Good. You can be up on the hands or fists or bring your elbows to walk to the floor. Let's just do a little swaying of the hips side to side. So let your weight wrap right to left. And just see how that feels to get into that outer hip a little bit more. But you can let that motion stop. Let's move the foot even wider out to the side so that you've got space to plant your palms for plank pose. Let's lift the back knee up off of the mat and carefully step to plank. Take a deep breath in and exhale, lower all the way down. Let's inhale, take a cobra and hold it. So it can be low or high. Wherever you are, really squeeze your glutes and press the front of the pelvis into the floor. I'm going to try and Really lengthen the hip flexors. Let your shoulder blades glide down the back as your rib cage and chest lift up. One more breath in. Exhale. Slowly lower down. Inhale. Push back up to your knees. Exhale the hips back and up to downward facing dog. And maybe pedal the legs a little bit. Just rock the hips side to side as you stretch down the back of the calves. Good. And then whichever foot you did not already do, we're going to just step forward. So for me, that's my left foot. Step it up in between the hands for that lunge. And then lower your back knee to the floor. Let's inhale, rise up to crescent lunge. Exhale, the palms together in front of the heart. And then twisting to that same front leg, rotate from your belly button and cross the elbow to the outside of the knee or thigh. And really push your top hand into the bottom hand. And rotate up the spine. And a nice, deep, steady breath. Try and glide your top shoulder blade back toward the spine. Good, everyone. The next time you exhale, just peel the elbow off and place the hands down. Both arms come inside of that front foot, which you're going to widen a little bit and turn out. And then drop the knee away from the shoulder. Good. You can stay high here on the hands or lower your elbows if you like. And let's just sway the hips a little bit. Just see if that 
feels good for this outer hip. If not, you can stay stationary in the pose. That's fine too. And when you're ready to release, drop the hands and drop your head. Slowly lift your hips as you lower the head and return to a forward bend. Toe heel, your feet a little closer together, about hip width apart. And hold on to your elbows again. Just let your shoulders sink down. Let go through the neck and breathe into your backside. Now let's let go of the elbows, take your hands against the shins, and inhale to the flat back position, gently pushing against the shins to help you extend the spine, and feel your shoulder blades retract back toward your hips. Get strong in your lumbar and core, and take a few breaths holding here. And straighten your legs as much as your hamstrings allow right now, so if it's not perfectly straight, that's fine. Just get a little stretch in the upper part of the hamstrings as you lift and reach back through the hips. Good. Maintain the flat back position and bring your hands to your waist. On an exhalation, press your hips forward and stand upright. Good. Let's let the arms just relax by your sides and stand in mountain pose. Take a few breaths just to get used to being upright here. Notice how your body feels. Good. All right. From here, we're 
to take a standing balancing posture. So if you'd like to move toward a wall, if you want to have a little assist, feel free to come off your mat. We're going to stand with the feet about hip width apart, so balancing variation of eagle pose. Bend your knees a little bit and send your hips way back in space. And feel your low back get strong like it just did in the flat back position. Let's cross the right ankle to the left thigh. You may need to use your hands to help. And then go even farther back with the hips. Bring your palms together in front of the heart. And then if you can, try bending the knee that you're standing on a little bit more. Bringing the upper body closer to the cross leg should get a deeper stretch in the piriformis, same place, and in the glutes, same place you feel in pigeon pose. Good, so you can stay here if this is a lot. If you want to try just a little challenge in this pose, we're going to try and add a prayer position twist. So look at your foot. That's crossed at the thigh. I'm going to twist toward that foot and bring the elbow into the arch of the foot and press the top hand against the bottom hand. Just a little bit of rotation. Start small. It doesn't have to be a lot here. And I usually feel that with that contact of my elbow into the arch of the foot, it actually deepens the hip stretch. I'm kind of pushing the foot back against the elbow and I really feel more going on in the hip. It doesn't have to be a lot. Good. If you're in that twist, let's just slowly come back to phase one, palms in front of the heart, and then let's all stand up if you haven't already. Good. Let's just maybe rock the hips a little bit, the leg that you're standing on, and just really release some of that intensity before we let that be our cross leg. Good. When you're ready to switch, bring the feet hip width apart again. And let's bend the knees and send the hips way back, strong in your low back. Bring the left ankle to the right thigh. You can help it out if you need. Palms together, hips go even farther back as you lean your upper body forward. Just feel that sensation that you get in pigeon pose. And really listen to your own body, right? You know how far you need to go in this pose. So if you're getting a lot of intensity just crossing the ankle, you don't have to go any farther, right? If you want to try folding more, upper body goes toward the cross leg. Or maybe if you're feeling adventurous, we're going to twist toward that foot. So bring the elbow into the arch of the foot. And top hand, just like we did in the crescent lunge earlier, is going to gently push the bottom hand. Just a little twist here. It's not going to be as deep in the spine as in the lunge. Good. If you're there, let's return hands to the heart. And then stand up if you haven't. Good, let's rock the hips a little bit, let that release. And then we're going to take one more squat to help release from that balance. Let's turn the feet out slightly, feet hip width, or a little wider than hip width rather, and then bend the knees, sit your hips way down, adjust if you need to, and then find the hands together, gently using the elbows to keep the knees wide. Good. And just like we were rocking a little bit in that lunge position, sometimes I like doing this. So I don't know if you can see where you are. I'm kind of alternating, rocking side to side. I come off of my heel on the side that I'm rocking to, and then switch. So if that feels good, just to bring a little movement into the hip opening, you can try that. If it doesn't feel good, you can stay still in the pose. And then eventually settle if you were doing that rocking motion. And we'll come out 
the same way we did before. So drop your head, lower your hands, slowly lift your hips, and find a forward bend. Toe, heel your feet closer together. And just hang over the legs for a few breaths, letting go through the neck. And from wherever you are on your mat, just walk it out into a down dog. So walk your hands or forward or feet back, whatever you need to do to end up there. We'll be there just a moment. And then from here, let's bring the knees down and we're gonna take them together for child's pose. Point the toes and sit back on your heels as you wrap both of your arms around the legs and let your shoulder blades separate away from the spine and sink down toward the ground. Close your eyes here. Just noticing gentle pressure of your forehead against the floor or the block if it doesn't touch. And from here, let's move back up into table, and we're going to come to threading the needle from here. So adjust your knees a little bit wider, and we're going to start by raising the right arm first. So you can inhale and reach up. Exhale, sweep that arm under you, shoulder and side of the head to the ground. Move your left hand over and push the floor with that hand to lean back more. So create that deeper twist. And really feel the right shoulder blade just gently separate away from the spine to stretch through the rhomboids and the lats. And just deep breath here. You can stay with the hand on the ground or you can raise your left arm up and let the palm fall back or take a half bind if you like or other variations of the pose. If you did do the half bind, let's just release the arm and reach up again. And then take the left hand to the floor and we'll press up off of the shoulder. You can reach up again to the right if you like. And then back to the table. Good. Other side, raise your left arm and reach up. Exhale, slide it underneath you. Move your right hand over a little and push the ground to help you lean back onto your left shoulder. A deep, slow breath. And if you like, you can raise your right arm up or take a half bind or other variation of the pose if you like. And if you took the half bind, unwrap the arm and reach up again. And then we'll all take the right hand to the floor, push the mat and come up off the left shoulder and reach up once again. And exhale, release. Good, let's just come to half dog. Walk your arms forward and press your chest down toward the ground. And depending on how deep this is in the upper back, you may be having your forehead on the floor or a block. Or if you're comfortable, you can try placing the chin on the mat if you have a deep extension in the upper back and shoulders. And 
And then from here, let's inhale and slowly lift it back up. And then we're going to take a seat. So if you like practicing your seated postures with some support, you can gather whatever you're using to elevate your hips. And I'm just going to face this way, actually. All right, so let's start with the soles of the feet together for seated down angle. We're going to take this pose two ways. So first, we're going to bring the heels close to the hips. Typical version of the pose. So bring them as close as is comfortable to you. Hold the feet or ankles and lift up through your spine. Draw your lumbar spine in and actively squeeze your outer hips to open the knees more. So let's just sit tall here for a few breaths. This version of the pose with the feet close to your hips, you're probably feeling it mostly in the inner thighs and hip flexors. And if you'd like to fold from here, let's tuck the chin, pull against the feet, and guide the spine forward and down. Just take your time here. Nice deep breath. And then keep squeezing those outer hips and glutes to help open the knees. So pretty active actually in your legs. And when you're ready to come out, just slowly start lifting your head and upper body. Walk the arms back in. Good. And let's bring the knees together. Let's straighten the left leg in front of you. Bring your right knee close to the upper body, drawing the heel in toward your hip. And hug that shin just to sit up tall, lengthening your spine again. And you've got two options for this twist. The foot can either stay here inside the leg or you can cross it to the outside of the straight leg. It's just going to give you a bit more stretch in your outer hip. So you're going to hold the bent knee toward you and then twist away from it, rotating as you put your right hand behind your back. 
Nice deep, low breath here. And you can adjust the twist, bringing the knee into the bend of your elbow if you like, or crossing that elbow to the outside of the knee, whatever feels good to you. One more breath in and exhale, unwind. Let's straighten that right leg in front of you. Bend your left knee and bring it in toward you. Sit up nice and tall as you hold the shin. Good, and either stay here or cross the foot to the outside of the straight leg. Good, let's twist away from the bent knee. So open your left arm behind you and Put the hand down. And you can wrap the elbow around the knee if that gives you a better twist or cross the elbow to the outside of the knee, just like we did in those prayer pose twists earlier. And when you're ready to unwind, exhale, release the twist and uncross your ankle. Good. Let's um, come down off of whatever you're sitting on. And you can put that aside for now. We're going to lie flat on the back. So carefully lower your body to the floor. And once you are down on your back, you can bend your knees. And I'm going to have you cross your right thigh tightly over the left thigh, like you would if you were sitting in a seat. So we're going to take a reclined twist now using the eagle legs. You can open the arms out to the side. And before you twist, move your hips to the right side of your mat a little bit. And then drop your knees to the left. That'll make the twisting the lower back a little bit easier. And if you want, you can do that little hook of the foot and ankle of eagle pose or you can just leave the feet as they were. But the hook might not feel good on your top knee. If you notice any discomfort there, just let it go. Let's take about five more deep breaths here. Feel heavy through your shoulders, especially the right side. Try and keep it down or as close to the floor as you can. If you've got those toes hooked behind the ankle, just undo that first and then slowly rock the hips to the floor as you lift the knees up and then uncross your right thigh. Good. Adjust your hips to the center of the mat for a moment and just pause here with your feet on the ground below your knees. Just let your spine and ribcage settle before we take that on the other side. It's a really deep twist for the low back. When you're ready for the left side, you're going to cross your left thigh tightly over the right and then adjust your hips over to the left a little bit, a couple of inches before we drop the knees to the right. Just go slowly here. It may be different on this side. And then if you like that little toe hook of eagle pose, it's kind of hard to know what is right and left anymore once you're in this, but for me, this side would be the left toes hooked behind the right ankle. If you can kind of conceive of that in space here.
level, toe hook if you have it, then slowly rock your hips toward the ground as the knees lift up, and then uncross the left thigh and slide your hips so they feel centered below the shoulders. And just pause there briefly. Take a few nice low deep breaths and let your spine and ribcage settle. And then bring both of your knees into your chest, just gently hugging the arms around the legs. You can rock a little bit side to side or take some circles with the knees, whatever would feel good, just to loosen up the lower back. And then from here, we're going to rest in Shavasana, corpse pose. So get comfortable on your back. If you like using any props to support your body, gather whatever you need to be relaxed. Or if you're happy flat on your back, just extend your arms and legs from here. Really take your time getting settled in your body. Be picky and adjust yourself if you need to so that you're not distracted in a few minutes by the urge to move. So really get comfortable. And then once the body is comfortable, gently close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Feel your lower jaw release and allow your tongue and throat to relax. And feel the muscles in the face soften. And let go of the deep breathing now at this point. Let your natural breath quality return. As a heaviness comes over the entire body. And I'll cue you when it's time to move and get up. So until then, just enjoy these few minutes of total rest for the body and the mind.
slowly bring your attention back to the surface and lengthen your breath. And in your own time, just begin to move a little bit through the fingers and toes. Just sending a signal to your body that you're about to move. And take any other little stretch that might feel good to you right now before you eventually move to one side of your body curled up into a fetal pose. Just pause there briefly and notice how you're feeling right now. And stay with that energy and come upright to any comfortable seat with your eyes still closed. Once you are sitting there, feel your spine lift upward. Relax the shoulders down the back and start to breathe more deeply. Feel that breath energy fill the entire body. And then we'll end chanting OM one time. You can bring the palms together in front of the heart and take a deep breath in. Oh. Exhale and gently bow your head, acknowledging yourself for making time and space to practice today and expressing gratitude to your body. Thank you all so much for being here. I so appreciate you showing up and practicing it the same time, different place. I um, hope you enjoyed tonight's class, and I uh, see you again on Wednesday.